All right, good evening, everyone. I call the City Council Committee the whole meeting for uh, Wednesday, December 7th to order. Um, at this time, we'll have a moment of silence for members Pearl Harbor for Remembrance Day. And then, of course, a lot of things going on that you need to think about probably. So moment of silence, please. Thank you. So Alderman McGinnis, if you'd lead us all in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Thank you, Alderman McGinnis. Mr. Krupp, City Deputy City Clerk, please call the roll. Dunn? Here. Kelly? Here. McGinnis? Here. Lee? Here. Grip? Here. Condon? Here. Cornette? Here. Dickman? Here. Jobjin? Here. And Ortez? Here. And present, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. So good evening, everyone. As we begin the meeting of the City Council Committee of the Whole, I want to welcome everybody in attendance and anybody who's potentially watching on any electronic device. We certainly welcome and respect your comments, but please keep in mind that as you share your thoughts, you're sharing them with your fellow Davenporters, anybody throughout the region. We're happy you're participating in your city government, but please ask that as you share your thoughts, you're sharing um, that Davenport um, is a greater place for everyone. So please just remember that. And for the folks here, if you have a cell phone, I'd ask you to put it on silent, turn it off simply because it gets in the way of someone talking. If you want to address the council on any specific item or at the end, please come to the podium. The microphone's above you. We'll ask you to keep it to five minutes. We'd love to know your name, ward, or address. And if you're not from here, we'd love to know where you're from. Please address us as a body and not any individual. We'll be respectful of you. Please be respectful of us. Thank you. City Administrator Spiegel, something for us this evening? Just a reminder that next Wednesday is the last city council meeting of 2022. And we will resume back in here for the first committee of the whole on January 4th, 2023. 2023. All right. Thank you. All right. We'll have four public hearings this evening, two under community development and two under public works. Community development public hearings will be led by Alderman Grip and assisted by Alderwoman Lee. Alderman Grip, please. Thank you, Your Honor. I open the public hearing for case REZ 22-07 being the request of high properties on behalf of Shamrock Properties LC to rezone approximately 104.57 acres of land bounded by Veterans Memorial Parkway, Eastern Avenue, Interstate 80, and Jersey Ridge Road from S Ag Agricultural District to R1 Single Family Residential District, R4 Single Family and Two Family Residential District, RMF Multifamily Residential District and C2 Corridor Commercial District. Is there anyone from the public who's here to comment on this public hearing? Seeing no one, I move to close the public hearing. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? This public hearing has been closed. I open the public hearing for case ROW 22-05 being the request of Corn Belt Capital LLC to vacate unimproved right-of-way located south of Re Research Parkway and to the west of Interstate 80 Airport Industrial Park 12th edition. Is there anyone from the public here to comment on this public hearing? Seeing no one, I move to close the public hearing. There's a motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Are there any opposed? This public hearing has been closed. Back to you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Grip and Alderman Lee. The next area is public works. Alderman Dunn will lead and Alderman Kelly will assist. Alderman Dunn, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Open the public hearing on the plan specification form of contract and estimated cost for the CDBG Alley Program, 301 Kirkwood Boulevard to 330 East 15th Street Alley Reconstruction Project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this public hearing? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. This public hearing is closed. I open the second public hearing on the plan specification form of contract and estimated cost for the 2032 South Marquette Street Sanitary Sewer Separation Project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this public hearing? Seeing none, I move to close the public hearing. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. This public hearing is closed and back to you, Your Honor. 
Thank you, Alderman Dunn and Alderman Kelly. And next item is we have one presentation this evening. Scott County Board of Supervisors Chairman, Mr. Beck, is here to give us a little briefing. Mr. Beck, welcome, and uh, please. Well, thank you, and again, good evening and greetings from the Board of Supervisors. Feels like it's been a busy week. I've been to LeClaire with this presentation, Bendorf yesterday, and you folks today. Seems like I'm working my way down river. And the purpose is to give you an insight into our current plan on the transformation of medics into a department of Scott County. But I just wanted to, before we go into that, just a little bit of an update uh, or a little bit of history back on the medics uh, organization. Medics is a 501c3 organization, not for profit, that was founded in 1982 to provide, to provide 911 services throughout Scott County, which you're probably all aware is about 175,000 the population today. The current medic board of director consists of 15 members, 10 of which are from the medical uh, institutions around the area, two are from the city of uh, Davenport, one from LeClaire, one from Bettendorf, one from Scott County, and one from the medics uh, organization themselves. The county has been providing medics with supplemental funding, funding to cover operational losses for quite some time. Many years, the county has not needed to provide any funding. Other times, it has never even got up close to the $200,000 that's set aside for them, which is really a testament on how well run the medics organization is. As we all know, funding and payment streams have changed over the years, putting a strain on both the medics personnel and their budget. It necessitates the need for the medics board of directors to search for long-term sustainable revenue and service models. In 2018, the medic board began a strategic initiative to evaluate the sustainability of both the current as well as future EMS services in Scott County. The intent of the medic boards has always been to keep the current service model, which is to provide comprehensive services throughout Scott County. The board initially evaluated forming a 28E agreement, which is similar to the Scott Emergency Calling Center and also the Waste Commission of Scott County, both of which City Davenport are members of. After discussions with the Iowa Department of Health and Human Services, which is the prior DHS, so you might want to make sure you get that in your vocabulary now. Uh, to, uh, as, after discussions with them, uh, the 28E agency was determined to be not an eligible agency or a type of uh, agent to receive the ground emergency medical transportation grant funding, which you probably all have heard as the GEMT, which could be used to help offset operational losses. And the reasoning they had was that basically the, uh, to get the GEMT funding, it has to be one governmental unit not an agency made up of individual agent or individual cities and counties. So when that uh, came across from HHS, that particular option was taken off the table. In October, the medic board unanimously approved asking the county to restructure medics into a department of Scott County. In addition, medics, uh, well, in addition to the medics board, Genesis and Scott County Board of Health both supported medics becoming a county department and providing service to all of Scott County. Medics becoming a county department will provide enhanced revenue opportunities, including Iowa Offset Program Revenue Recovery, potential GEMT funding, and although not currently under consideration by the county, a Chapter 422D, which is Iowa code that allows a supplemental levy uh, for EMS services throughout the county. As a county department, medics will not only have new revenue opportunities, but will also reduce expenses by combining the day-to-day -day operations with the county departments that provide those services currently. Improving employee benefits, which are expected to reduce the turnover 
and associated costs. Sales tax exemption for especially high cost equipment. And finally, no state or federal fuel tax. And we all know that they, as well as your vehicles, go through a ton of that in a year. In addition to the operational efficiencies, we believe that becoming a county department will improve employee re recruitment as well as employee retention by placing employees on our county wage scales, which are, they are considered each year for a step increase as well as a COLA increase and increasing the benefits through enrollment in the IPERS program. The Board of Supervisors did instruct the staff to review the process of transforming MEDIC into a county department during the year, F, fiscal year of 2024. Our year uh, closes in July, June 30th, yes, July 1st, a new one starts. MEDIC starts in January. So those, one of those two dates would be an ideal date to transfer their um, people into the county department. The journey to transfer medics into a county department is a work in progress, and today I'm updating you on our current plan for that transitioning process, which includes retaining a business consultant to assist the county through the transition. We are currently reviewing uh, a company, and I think we're pretty close to engaging that uh, company to provide those services for us. We are currently creating a job description, setting salary range for the department head who will serve the day-to-day -day operations of the medics operation. That person will report to Mahesh Sharma, our county administrator, and we will plan to get them on board to help through this transitioning ahead of the actual uh, time that that occurs. And last, uh, in the future, once we get closer to that time, we will be retaining a legal consultant whose experience with mergers and acquisitions. While we see this transformation as a positive means to continue providing high level quality services to all residents of Scott County, it is also means to enhance those services moving into the future. Again, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today and updating you on our current plan for this transition. A future updates will be provided as we move down the road and make this uh, transition happen. And I would entertain, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them, and uh, if not, thank you again. Mr. Beck, we appreciate you coming here, and, and thank you for your time. You're welcome. All right, next we'll move to petition communications. Anyone? Okay, whole bunch. Alderman Joseph. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Just wanted to announce that next Tuesday, uh, December 13th, we'll be having a six word meeting, 6.30 p.m. at Duck Creek Park Lodge. There will be a member from Family Resources there to uh, give some information about uh, the CAP program. Um, and there might be a couple other guests. So hopefully you see plenty of people out and uh, have a lively discussion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Jochen. Alderwoman Dickman. Just wanted to remind everyone that I'll be having a ward meeting tomorrow at 6 p.m. at Fairmount Library. Uh, our guest will be Brian Schatt. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, some of the things that are going on with the roads in the state. Thank you. Thank you, Alderwoman Dickman. Alderman Cornett. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the 7th and 8th ward will be having a meeting tomorrow night at 6 o'clock at Eastern Library. Uh, there'll be some snacks there. We'll just have a uh, discussion time where the uh, population can come in and say what they're unhappy with, and we'll try to fix it for them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Cornett. Anyone else? Very good. Okay, we'll move to action items for discussion. We have four areas, community development, uh, public safety, public works, and finance. The first area is community development. Alderman Grip and Alderwoman Lee will discuss. Alderman Grip, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Item number one is a second consideration ordinance for case ORD 22-01 being the request of RY Holdings, LLC, 
to amend table 17.08-1, use matrix of the municipal code of Davenport, Iowa to allow dwelling single family as a permitted use in the RMF multifamily residential zoning district. Is there anyone from the public who is here to comment on this agenda item? Anyone from the council? Seeing no one, this item will move on. Item number two is a first consideration ordinance for case REZ 22-07 being the request of high properties on behalf of Shamrock Properties LC to rezone approximately 104.57 acres of land bound by Veterans Memorial Parkway, Eastern Avenue, Interstate 80 and Jersey Ridge Road from SAG Agricultural District to R1 Single Family Residential District, R4 Single Family, and two family residential district and RMF multifamily residential district and C2 corridor commercial district. Is there anyone from the public who is here to comment on this item? Please step to the lectern, state your name and address or ward. Evening, my name is John Brook. And uh, I live at 2229 Cromwell Circle. I um, took the opportunity to write a, a, a little bit of a list of objections or concerns that I had with this project, which I forwarded to hopefully to the committee. And uh, I'm here tonight, really, if, if there are any questions for me, I'll be around and you can ask if I, I didn't make things clear. That's really all I had to, to say tonight. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who wishes to comment on this item? Mayor, members of the council, I'm Daryl High with High Properties, 211 First Avenue in Cedar Rapids. Um, I'm here, we uh, accept all the conditions that were imposed on the property by staff and recommended at planning and zoning, and I'm here to answer any questions if you have any. Anyone else from the public have any comments? All right, seeing no one, we will go to uh, council comments and then if, the, if there's any questions for the developer, we'll bring you back up, sir, and have you answer those questions. Uh, we'll start with Alderman Jobjin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I don't really have any questions and, and no comments of strenuous objection on this other than I just wanna reiterate something I said a couple weeks ago with the rezoning um, case in uh, the sixth ward, you know, Really, I, I would like to see redevelopment in our other areas of the city, Locust Street, Kimberly Road, our north-south uh, one ways, Highway 61 uh, versus versus um, establishing something new. I get it. We got a free market system, um, so I take, you know, I, I don't begrudge the developers for wanting to do this. It's just something that I really think as a city would make us stronger, um, look better. Um, we have areas of blight that need significant improvement versus establishing a new area of development. Thank you. Anyone else from council? All right, seeing no one, we'll move on to item number three. Item number three is a first consideration ordinance for case ROW 22-05 being the request of Corn Belt Capital LLC to vacate unimproved right of way located south of Research Parkway and to the west of Interstate 80 Airport Industrial Park 12th edition. Anyone from the public here to comment on this item? Anyone from the council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number four is a resolution for case F21-14 being the request of Spear Development on behalf of Ed Spear Construction Inc. and Sheila M. Spear Living Trust for a final plat of Spear Commercial Park 2nd Edition, a one lot subdivision on 17.69 acres located south of East 53rd Street and east of Spring Street. Is there anyone from the public who's here to comment on this item? Anyone from the council? Seeing no one, this item will move on. 
Item number five is a resolution for case F22-10 being the request of River Bend Food Reservoir on behalf of 3N Corporation for a final plat of River Bend First Edition, a five lot subdivision on 72.86 acres located south of Kimmel Drive. Anyone from the public here to comment on this item? Anyone from the council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number six is a resolution for case F22-13, being the request of Klinger and Associates on behalf of Davenport Ventura LLC for a final plat of Brady 80 Business Center, third edition, a two lot subdivision located at the end of Jason Way Court on 22.48 acres. Is there anyone from the public who is here to comment on this item? Anyone from the council? Seeing no one, this item will move on. And our final item, number seven, is a motion to approve the appeal to overturn the Design Review Board decision to deny case DR 22-21 exterior painting at 626 West River Drive. Um, should be noted that a yes vote overturns uh, Design Review Board decision and no vote upholds Design Review Board decision. That'll take place, that vote will take place next week. Is there anyone from, anyone from the public who's here to comment on this item? Step to the lectern, state your name and address or ward, please. Mayor, Council. I'm uh, Bill Sheeter. I own MFN Investments, who owns the property of 626, which is our, I also own Cookies and Dreams, who occupies that, um, that building. Um, it's the old Kennel Club right off Centennial Bridge. That's our new headquarters for Cookies and Dreams. I sent in a, a late email with some of the photos um, and have had a pretty open dialogue with some of the people in the city. The denial mostly was because um, I had some communication. I personally wasn't at the meeting and the architect wasn't either. Um, so being nobody there to discuss the application for the painting um, was a big reason for the denial. And uh, kind of going through with the city and some of the things that go with denying the paint is um, obviously there's historic concerns um, and kind of the location with some of like the FEMA and, and uh, historical preservation. This building does not fall under any of that stuff. Um, it's mostly one of the things is the old brick. Uh, and in the email that I sent, there's photos. Uh, majority of the building was developed within the last probably 20 to 30 years. The brick isn't old. Um, so there's really no concern for like painting of the brick and um, Cookies and Dreams itself is I don't know if you guys know um, Company here that was founded in Davenport and we definitely wanted to find a building uh, downtown um, Just to kind of promote that we're a Davenport company and with now we have a very big national presence uh, Stores in Chicago and Ankeny and we're kind of a really big growing company and the whole idea with this headquarters is what we use to ship our cookies nationwide. And it's been a really uh, fun venture. So the building itself on the outside um, was kind of the last thing that we've been working on. But on the inside, we've put over uh, approximately over a million dollars of investment into the inside of the building. It was pretty much unusable. Um, so this kind of uh, timely paint was to just... Uh, make the building a lot nicer, more presentable. Um, we have a big investment in that whole corner. And I don't think there's any um, conflict with what we were going to paint it. Um, and it's nice to kind of promote, which we do, uh, this company that was founded here and our headquarters being downtown. And I hope for many years to come that uh, it's kind of a proud Davenport thing that a you know, small company like that could, could grow that big. So long story short, we're just working on the outside of the building. So the appeal was mostly due to um, just not being at the meeting, I, I believe. So just wanted to take that in consideration. If you have any questions, I'm here. Thank you. Let's see if there's any other comments from the public. All right, seeing none, I will move to council comments. Alderwoman McGinnis. Thank you. Um, thank you, Alderman. Um, I would ask first uh, if uh, 
Planner Laura Berkeley could come forward, please. <coughs> Thank you, Ms. Berkeley. Um, could you go through sort of the, this process to now, just for everyone that's here, how it began, what it went through, why we're standing here tonight? Sure, Laura Berkeley, Development Neighborhood Services. Uh, so the building at 626 West River Drive originally came through um, for some exterior work to the design review board um, that was heard at the June 28th, 2021 meeting. And that was for doors, um, exterior stairs, and cleaning and tuck pointing the ex existing mason masonry. That was approved uh, on the condition if there was a need to replace any of the brick that it um, be reviewed by staff to ensure it, it matched the existing brick. Um, after that date, um, in early November, uh, staff noticed that um, the building was being painted. Uh, so a, sta a stop work order was issued and the petitioner did comply with that stop work order. We explained um, that any exterior work on the, ex um, the building needs to go through design review board because of the, the zoning district it's located within. Um, and he submitted the um, application to, to paint the, the building in its entirety. Uh, that was denied at the November 28th, 2022 meeting. Um, and largely it's against the um, downtown design guidelines to uh, paint historic brick. Um, and um, it's also something for continuity of building um, block faces uh, to have some continuity and painting individual buildings kind of breaks up that uh, continuity. Thank you. Um, and uh, could you explain to the public why uh, the challenges with historic now part of that brick, I know that there's a, small, a smaller section on the west side that is a little bit newer, but it is an older building. Um, can you explain um, why we don't typically recommend painting older brick? Sure. Um, so you're correct. There are, there are two sections to this building. One, one was originally constructed in 1902. Uh, the other was an addition that was added on in 1977. Um, when, when you get, all brick is porous and it breathes. Um, it lets in air and water. Um, older brick is softer. It was, um, it was man-made and not mass produced. Um, and so um, it needs more breathing and it's, it's softer brick. So it is more susceptible to crumpling. Um, so when you lock in moisture behind the brick, which happens when you paint it, it loses its um, ability to breathe. You're trapping in um, water vapor that then freezes and thaws and uh, damages the structure of a brick from the inside out. Um, and that's when you see more progressive um, crumbling of a brick and it, it uh, damages the structural integrity of the building's um, facade. Thank you. And um, going back to the, uh, the, the, so anything in downtown, within the downtown district comes under uh, this review, correct? Right, um, anything visible from the street. Anything visible from the street. Inside is another story. Um, so it doesn't matter if it's historic, designated historic, if it's within the downtown, it is, is, it is within the design review board and that's a well-established commission. That's message. correct, yes. Okay, um, could that block, um, as I'm remembering, is um, an interesting collection of low scale um, uh, 19th century and early 20th century buildings and I believe they're all unpainted. Correct. Other than some um, wall signs, some wall they're signs. unpainted. Okay. So it, it is un so keeping it also unpainted in the context of its surroundings is important as well. Right. Okay. All right. Now, um, I had another question for you. Um, this was this the um, so this applicant was this the first time this person has been before um, this, pro been involved in this process? No, um, so the applicant actually owns several buildings in the downtown and, and the Village of East Davenport, which is also under design review boards um, review. Um, and so he, um, him and, and several of his buildings ha have been before design review board before. With questions of painting? Um, yes, the, um, the, um, 
building at 122 East 4th Street did involve painting. Uh, that's the current toasted. Um, that went through in 2020. Right. And I believe that was a previously painted building. Yeah, that's correct. And there was another uh, request um, in, in, in the last review, right, for another building? Is that right on East 2nd Street? Correct, yes. Okay. Um, uh, that building's at... Uh, 410 East Second, or sorry, at 412, 418 East Second Street. Um, um, that one, was, he also requested for that to be painted. That was also denied. He has agreed to remove the paint from that building. So he is not was appealing. That began on that. Yes. Pat, so can you explain how that happened? Sure. Um, so there were some renderings that were submitted um, with their original request in um, October 2021. For some work that was planned for that building that showed it um, as a gray building the rendering showed the building as great so staff did ask are is there plans to paint this um, we were told no there was notations added to the rendering saying that no painting of the brick was um, was planned um, and so at, at the same time as we saw the the painting happening um, at the River Drive property. It was also happening at the Second Street property. Okay. So without permission and and even when you were told it was not going to be painted. Correct. And there was in, was there, in, there was no discussion about this building in the application process, the, the one we're talking about tonight, that, right, that they're the, asking for the appeal. Okay. Right. So there, there was nothing in the application originally about painting. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Alderman Ortez. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. I'm trying to understand this. So before Mr. Sheeter took over this building, I see that there was a Scott County Kennel Club. Is painting, like on signs, is there certain square footage that, because to me, then what we're saying is this 20 by 20, the brick's going to eventually go bad, that if that's the case, we allow that, but we don't allow on the, is there, like, how that was allowed, and then it isn't now? Okay, so, um, in the new code, um, there is language in the sign section that uh, painted signs are prohibited. So, um, that happened prior to the new code. Um, I, I think, actually, that building... Um, was painted prior, it may have been painted prior to design review board existing. I'd have to go back and, and take a look. Um, no, no, no. Yeah. So, uh, so like I said, anything now that would have been, if Scott County Kennel Club, for example, was still there, they'd have been grandfathered in correct. to it. But yes. any new buildings downtown or within the purview, there's no more allowed painting of their business signs? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Alderman Condon. Thank you. Um, first off, well, I do want to say uh, thank you for your investment uh, in our community and, and also downtown. Um, as a uh, business owner, sometimes I've found myself um, with a vision and, and trying to pursue it, and, and you run up against restrictions. And, and um, candidly, uh, this uh, oversight seems to be um, pretty glaring in, in the way that Alderwoman McGinnis was uh, able to walk us through. Um, generally, in, in all communities, there is an appreciation of overall aesthetic. So um, speaking more to the aesthetics and not just the historic and uh, structural integrity, um, residential areas were commonly all have uh, HOAs and design restrictions within them. And, and even in the commercial <coughs> field, uh, if you're a part of any business park, um, there, there's some sort of uh, restriction to appreciate that we don't look at the buildings individually. We have to appreciate the overall aesthetic of the area. And the downtown and the village, those areas are special areas so that they, they do fall under um, some extra special restrictions. And, and that's to the benefit of um, all of us because it is, it is such a unique area. And um, as I said previously, and um, you know, even if it's looking at that one individual building, it may be hard to have an appreciation of why painting that building would matter. So you have to zoom out and look at the neighborhood and see how that building speaks to the larger fabric of the community. And, and even the protection put on that building, as I 
said previously, may not even be appreciated in the present tense because Davenport and downtown Davenport is being revitalized so much um, and so quickly. What might seem like a lemon right now that would be uh, best painted um, takes away the opportunity to um, maybe let that building become the best version of itself as, as, as it comes along. So um, trying to stay within the lanes of, of, of what these restrictions are as I speak uh, about this matter, but, um, but I did want to uh, um, also allude to that, you know, we only have one downtown and, and, and these restrictions were put in place um, for the betterment of both the present tense and the future tense of, of the special districts that they're in. And um, I thank the design review board for, our, um, for uh, taking the time to, to, to serve, first of all, and, and also for having the courage to um, kind of be the bad guy and, and police these matters as they come before us. And, and I feel like it's my job as a, a councilman to um, reinforce what they've decided. Um, so that's, that's how I view the issue. Thank you. Uh, sorry, we, we've already gone through uh, public, public with comment on this one, so my apologies. All right, um, Alderman Jobjo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, maybe just for the public's uh, um, knowledge, I mean, would this be something that might be on discussion so then next week if they have something to say, they might be able to come and speak before the council 530 next Wednesday? Yeah, so this is a, a motion uh, to approve an appeal, so it's on a two-week cycle. So um, we ask for public opinion tonight, then we discuss it on the council. Uh, next week, we'll come back. We'll ask for the public's uh, input again. Uh, the council will discuss it again, and then the council will take a vote next week. Um, so seeing no one else from the council, the, the one thing I would say is, uh, Mr. Sheeter, uh, again, thank you for investing uh, in Davenport. Um, if there's, uh, if you would like to, to sit down and look at uh, different options uh, for for the building and kind of talk through this, I know it's uh, a nuanced conversation, but it's an important one. I'd be happy to sit down with you and have that conversation. Um, um, well. If typically, if somebody had a, had a question, they would they would call you up and ask. So um, I didn't hear any questions from the council. So uh, if you want to continue the the dialogue um, outside of the meeting before next meeting, um, I'm giving you that invitation. I'd be happy to sit down with you and and, and have the the conversation that is sometimes difficult to have in this in this setting before before next week. Okay. All right. Uh, seeing no one else, I would ask that uh, Alderwoman Lee please set our agenda. Thank you very much. Uh, I move to put items one, two, and seven on the discussion agenda and the remaining items on the consent agenda. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? All right. That concludes community development, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Grip and Alderwoman Lee. The next area is public safety. Alderman Jobson and Alderwoman Dickman will discuss. Alderman Jobson, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First item on the public safety agenda is a resolution approving the following lane closure request for the listed date and time. Ballet Quad Cities Nutcracker School Program 2022 Adler Theater, 136 East 3rd Street, Friday, December 9, 2022, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Closures northernmost and central travel lanes on East 3rd Street between Brady Street and Iowa Street. Please note this is to be voted on later on the agenda. And then we have item number two, motion approving beer and liquor license applications. These are all um, annual license renewals, which typically do not read, but I'm feeling festive and this is a short agenda. So here we go. A&S Food and Gas, 2365 Rockingham Road, license type, class E liquor. Next, the diner, 421 West River Drive, number six, outdoor area license type, class C liquor. Next, High V Food and Drug Store, 1823 East Kimberly Road, license type, type class e liquor next columbus club 1111 west 35th street license type class c liquor next rnc brazilian steakhouse llc 320 west kimberly road number 53 license type class c liquor and last 
Yummy Crab, 1235 East Kimberly Road, license type Class C liquor. And I just realized I didn't ask for any comment on item number one. So I apologize as my festive nature let me go. So first, is there anybody from public wishing to comment on item number one? Anyone from council? Alderman Lee. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I'd like to ask the city administrator, you know, normally I do not support um, um, suspending the rules. Is there, and, but I do support ballet quad cities and getting children involved and Nutcracker is a very important part. Um, so there's been uh, some discussion on how this has happened and won't happen again. So, and I talked with Brian about this this week, uh, as we roll into the new year, uh, we will be sending out a notification to all special events. Uh, we have a database of it telling them that the council is frowning upon the continued abuse of the system um, and will not be as supportive going forward and they should plan accordingly. Okay, thank you very much. Alderman McGinnis. Thank you, Alderman Judgeon. Um, uh, yes, uh, Administrator. Um, what? Um, who? Who is the? Who fell through? Who fell through the cracks on this one? Or this, who didn't? This was Venue Works in the River Center. Sorry. Venue Works in the River Center. Okay. So they so. should have done this on behalf of the client, or they are the applicant. Okay. So. All right. Okay. There you go. Well, that was a problem the last time. Thank you. Seeing no one else on item number one, I will. Step back to item number two. Is there anyone from public wishing to comment on those license renewals? Anyone from council? Seeing none, then I would ask Alderwoman McGinnis, or excuse me, Alderwoman Dickman to please set the agenda. I'm way off. All right, I move that item two be placed on the consent agenda and that item one will be voted on later on the agenda. I suppose I should vote yes, because my son gets to go this year and I'm really excited. We have a motion. And a second, all in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. That closes the disoriented uh, public safety agenda. Back to you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Jobson and Alderman Dickman. The next there is Public Works. Alderman Dunn and Alderman Kelly will discuss. Alderman Dunn, please. Thank you, Your Honor. We have a pretty lengthy agenda this evening. So item number one is a resolution approving the plan specification form of contract and estimated cost for the CDBG Alley Program. 301 Kirkwood Boulevard to 330 East 15th Street Alley Reconstruction Project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number two is a resolution approving the plan, specification, form of contract, and estimated cost for the 2032 South Marquette Street Sanitary Sewer Separation Project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number three is a resolution awarding a contract for the West 43rd Street, Lincoln Avenue to Linwood Avenue reconstruction project to Centennial Contractors of Quad Cities, Moline, Illinois, in the amount of $572,814. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number four is a resolution awarding a contract for a computer-aided dispatch dispatching automatic vehicle locator system to ETA Transit Systems of Boca Raton, Florida, in the amount not to exceed $150,000. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number five is a resolution of acceptance covering the assessment for the FY 2022 Stream Bank Stabilization Project at West 62nd Street and North Elmwood Avenue in accordance with the Stream Bank Stabilization 5050 Cost Share Program. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to? just to address this item. Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number six is a resolution approving and adopting preliminary plan and specifications and plats schedules for the FY 2023 alley resurfacing program. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number seven is a resolution authorizing the submission of a land and water conservation fund outdoor recreation legacy partnership program grant application for the assistance with the Goose Creek Park Stream Bank Restoration and Access Project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Alderwoman Lee. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I could have someone from Public Works come up and 
talk a little bit about this project and if you have a map. I'm pretty excited. I'm, yeah, looking forward to hearing more. Clay Mayor Public Works. Uh, so we have an opportunity through the state um, that we think we'll be successful with to do both a stream bank stabilization uh, project in an area um, that needs it along Goose Creek by also um, adding recreational opportunities as well. So we think it's a good opportunity that um, for us to accomplish something that we were looking to accomplish anyway with, with city funds and seeing how we can leverage um, and get some more um, for the city as well. And I understand this grant is also for a low income area? That's correct. So this is Goose Creek Park. Well, that's a perfect yes. place for it. Yep. And we're working in partnership uh, at Public Works with the Parks and Recreation Department to see how we can combine our efforts to kind of get as much as we can. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number eight is a resolution authorizing the submission of a building resilient infrastructure and communities program grant application to the Federal Emergency Management Agency for the assistance with the water pollution control plant flood mitigation phase two project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number nine is a resolution of acceptance covering the assessment for the FY 2021 alley resurfacing project in, accord in accordance with the alley cost share program. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 10 is a resolution accepting the storm sewer and pavement associated with the Scrabble addition. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 11 is a resolution accepting the sanitary sewer, storm sewer, and pavement associated with Katie's Eastern Avenue addition. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 12 is a resolution accepting work completed under the Hillendale Road and Research Parkway intersection project by Hawkeye Paving Corporation of Davenport, Iowa in the amount of $518,684.77. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 13 is a resolution accepting work completed under the EMI's ADA Access Improvement Project by Hawkeye Paving Corporation of Davenport, Iowa in the amount of $182,006.25. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 14 is a resolution accepting work completed under the FY 2021 contract sewer repair program by Hometown Plumbing and Heating Company of Davenport, Iowa in the amount of $524,582.06. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Seeing council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 15 is a motion accepting work completed under the Riverfront Trail Patching Project by Hawkeye Paving Corporation of Davenport, Iowa in the amount of $79,675.90. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council. Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 16 is a motion changing approving change order number one with Gillig Incorporated of Livermore, California in the amount of $84,165 for the purchase of three diesel buses. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council, Alder Woman Lee. Just a quick question. Is this an addition to the um, four electric buses that we're getting a, the grant for? Nicole Gleason, Public Works. Uh, no, what this one is, is the diesel buses we ordered approximately 15 months ago. Um, sometimes Gillig can put on our ancillary equipment, like our AVL, video cameras, things like that. Sometimes they can't. It depends on if it's a vendor they work with. Um, so this is basically the true up for those extra parts on the buses. Oh, the, the buses we have? Uh, the ones we just received. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're, they're a long lead time. Okay, yep. thank you. Yep. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing on this item, we'll move on. Item number 17 is a motion approving change order number two to OPN Architects of Cedar Rapids, Iowa in the amount of $66,861 for the Fairmount Community Center project. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. Item number 18 is a motion awarding a contract for the digester withdrawal pipe replacement project to Hometown Mechanical of Davenport, Iowa in the amount of $74,985. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address this item? Council? Seeing none, this item will move on. And Alderman Kelly, would you set the agenda for us, please? Thank you, sir. I'd like to make a motion to move all items to the consent agenda, please. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. The agenda is set. And back to you, Your Honor. 
Thank you, Alderman um, Dunn and Alderman Kelly. The next uh, area is finance. Alderman Condon and Alderman Cornett will discuss. Alderman Condon, please. Thank you, Your Honor. We have four items on finance this evening. Item number one is a resolution approving the renewal of cyber liability insurance for uh, CY 2023 with Beasley Breach Response underwritten by Lloyds of London in the amount of $156,853. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address item number one? Council? Number one will move on. Item number two is a resolution awarding a one-year contract for the purchase of specific and ag aggregate stop-loss insurance to Reliastar Life Insurance Company slash Voya Financial in the amount of $1,044,808 and authorizing the Assistant City Administrator slash CFO to sign any related agreements. Anyone from the public wishing to address item number two? Council? Number two, we'll move on. Item number three is a resolution awarding a two-year contract with the option of three one-year extensions to Psychology Health Group of Davenport, Iowa to provide work-related professional mental health services to the City of Davenport emergency service personnel and authorizing the Human Resources Director to sign any related agreements. Is there anyone from the public wishing to address item number three? Council. And finally, uh, item number four is a resolution awarding a two-year contract with the option of three one-year extensions to Revolution Counseling Services, LLC of Davenport, Iowa to provide work-related professional mental health services for the City of Davenport Emergency Service personnel and authorizing the Human Resources Director to sign any related agreements. Anyone from the public wishing to address item number four? Council? Below, we have purchases from 10000 to 50000 We won't read each of those individually, but they're listed there for your information. Alderman Cornett, would you please set our finance agenda? I move that all items be placed on the consent agenda. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That concludes finance. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Condon and Alderman Cornett. The next area is other ordinances, resolutions, and motions. We do have one today. Uh, but first, we need a motion for suspension of the rules. Is there a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Brian, please call the roll for suspending the rules so we can talk about this. Cornette? Aye. Kelly? Yes. Grip? Yes. Lee? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Dickman? Yes. Jobgen? Yes. Ortez? Yes. Condon? Yes. And done. Yes. And yes, as Your Honor. Very good. The rules are suspended, so now we can discuss the resolution approving the following land closure request on a list of date and time. Ballet Quad Cities, Nutcracker School Program 2022, Adler Theater, 136 East 3rd Street, Friday, December 9th, 2022, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. The closures are the northernmost and center travel lanes on East 3rd Street between Brady and Iowa streets. Is there any public with comment? Seeing none, is, will an alderman move the resolution? Okay, any discussion from any older folks? Alderman Condon. I'll just mention that I'm doing my best to be rigid with this, and, and I got a blessing from Brian. Of course, it was put to me that uh, if I'd be willing to cancel Christmas, and that's, that's why this one got through. But next year, I will cancel Christmas if you don't get your stuff in time. That's the direction we're moving. So uh, apologies for not holding the line to my colleagues. Thank you, Alderman Condon, anyone else? I agree, we need to tighten up the suspensions, so. All right, uh, Brian, please call the roll on this resolution. Dunn? Yes. Condon? Yes. Cornett? Yes. Lee? Yes. Kelly? Yes. Jobgen? Yes. Ortez? Yes. McGinnis? Yes. Dickman? Yes. And Grip. Yes. And yes, as Your Honor. Very good. The resolution is adopted, so have your Nutcracker School Program. Is there any public with business that that's the next item? Seeing none, any reports, Ms. Spiegel? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Second. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you very much. Be safe. Have a good weekend.